Welcome gamers to this week's episode of Last Call Gaming. We're on episode number 96. My name is Craig Prowlis and joining me is Andrew Montemayor. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing today, Andrew? Dude, it is so hot out. Have you been outside besides brutal. when we just went? Well, yeah, me and Gino went to go have uh, an afternoon beer and walking outside. Yeah, man, it's a... Where'd you go to? Beer gentlemen. Oh, nice. Went and saw Jimbo. It is 118 today and that's, what are we, Fahrenheit? <laughs> Not Celsius. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, Bullhead is just one of those places, man. They get hotter and hotter, and you always see people saying like the Midwest gets hot or like Texas gets hot. But I mean, this particular place in Arizona is a scorcher. I just hate seeing people complaining. They're like, "Oh, it's a hot one today," and it says like ninety five, and I'm like, "God willing." <laughs> yeah, I pray for those days. So. Uh, if you guys are joining us at home and you got time to grab a beer, normally Andrew and I record uh, t- you know, on a Friday, but today's Thursday, so we did a quick beer pickup and just grabbed a couple of Ultras, nothing fancy today. Ultra's always a very good fallback, light beer, the where you know you can drink quite a few of them and it not, you know, hopefully affect your judgment too much. Oh, yeah, even still, just don't feel like discussing it. And to be honest, maybe with all the tropical stuff we've had lately and everything, I've been kind of... I was just ready for, like, just a chill beer. Yeah, this is a styling it back down from a shitload of IPAs to just, let's get back in the neutral. I wish they had Rolling Rock in there, but I didn't see any. Ooh, a Rolling Rock would have been nice. So I would have loved a nice skunked out, <laughs> a skunked out Rolling Rock. Uh, so moving forward, guys, um, give us a quick moment of your time and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And um, definitely try to leave a comment down below. We try to interact with as many of you guys as possible. If you guys want to, follow us on all the social medias that you see pop up here. Link is also in the description description and if you guys are listening to the audio only version of this podcast whether that's on spotify or itunes or anything like that do us a favor and leave us a kind review and a nice rating because it helps us reach a nice broad audience if you've never seen us and you're only listening on an audio podcast for some reason leave a comment and try to guess what we look like oh so i'd like to read that comment based off the sound (laughs) of our voice (laughs) well the sound of my voice yeah that could be dangerous so um with that down and out of the way guys uh andrew and i before we dig into stories we like to go into what we call what are you up to where we take a minute and just talk about what we've been playing any trips planned any events that have been happening any games you're playing so i don't even want you to ask me i want to hear what you're up to first i am up to as far as um, watching, I'm still watching Ink Master. I'm on like season seven or eight now. It, I'm cruising through them, man. It's 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 really really addictive stuff. Just got a tattoo. You can't really see it right now, but so it's just it just kind of helps you more analyze. You know, when you see tattoos and you get to see I'm these, definitely snobby. These critiques, yeah. So that's uh, really good. But the show that just I, I needed something that wasn't just watching a reality show. You know, back to back to back. Even though I can skip that 40 minute episode into like 20 and still get what I need out of it, I started watching the show on Netflix called uh, Black Summer. And it, I, I guess it. The it, zombie show? Yeah, it started airing on really? April 2019. Zombie shows are not my cup of tea. I don't know. Yeah. Not that I, I, I. It's scary or anything like that. Zombies don't, you know, scare me or anything. It's just usually they're stupid. I'm not. I'll play Walking Dead games. I don't really give a shit to watch The Walking Dead or Walking Fear Dead the Walking Dead. Good, but... The one show I did like was Daybreak. I don't know if you ever saw that with Matthew Broderick. And uh, it kind of had like this funny high school vibe to it. But Black Summer is kind of like this weird, like Last of Us mixed with like Quentin, Quentin Tarantino style of like storytelling. It's Netflix original, isn't it? I, I believe so. And it's supposed to be based off of, I think, Day Z. It's supposed to be like a prequel to Day Z or at least somewhere in that timeline. And what I like about it is, dude, these zombies are fast. Like these are like full sprint fucking zombies. And the moment they turn, like the moment they get bit, Like, a minute goes by. They're a zombie. You know what I mean? There's no long waiting period. So, and the way it tells the stories is kind of like like the Quentin Tarantino style. It's like a quick little story and then a black card and a name and then the next story. And it kind of either is different points in time, but they all kind of overlap and eventually kind of cross paths. And it's almost like kind of like Game of Thrones too, where people you think are like lead people like get dropped in like the next episode so i don't know for me i've been finding it really um satisfying and but season two just came out and that's what caught my eye on netflix it's like new season new episodes so i started watching that and i gotta tell you um i really really like it and i'm really curious what your thoughts is because the weird thing is the episode will start off being 40 minutes but then like by the time you get to the last episode it's only 20 minutes so like it kind of shrinks down the time so it's kind of hard for me to place like how long it would actually be but it's got good cues of when you can take a pee break or a stop break because the moment the story changes, just hit pause and move to the next one. I'm definitely going to have to check that out. Then. I think I think you would kind of dig it. Um, I posted it on Twitter and my buddy Daniel was like, uh, he's like, I'm, I'm starting it and if this thing sucks, 
I'm gonna be pissed. So I don't know. So far, I liked it. But as far as what I've been playing is, I've put the Xbox on hold because if you guys remember last week, uh, we said we go, we're getting a PS5. So the PS5 did come in, did come in early, and it was the free upgrade to the disc drive version when I only paid for the disc list. And um, the first game that comes packed in with is Astro's Playroom. It's this game that's already preloaded. It's this platform game that is pretty much all nostalgic based. Like what you're hunting for is each level has four puzzle pieces and two artifacts. And all the artifacts are like PlayStation equipment. So like the first level, you're finding a bunch of stuff from like PS1, the multi-tap, the memory card, the controller. Excuse me. The second level is all PS2, PS3, PS4. So it's it's fantastic. I thought it was a perfect game to start with the PS5, and I actually 100%ed it. So it's easy enough to where you can cruise through and get a bunch of shit. Next game is going to be Ratchet and Clank. I just started it today, but I'm nowhere near to even give like a critique or a review about it. And then eventually I want to get into Returno. But that is what I've been up to. What have you been doing? <laughs> Sorry, a little long-winded, but that show's really good. I want you to check it out. No, no, it was good. I'm definitely going to have to check it out now. I've actually just been playing Monster Hunter Iceborne again, just trying to cruise through. Funnily enough, actually, I was, so I was playing, some random dude messaged me, but I kind of recognized his name, and he's like, hey, you got a mic? And we started playing together, and it was someone I played Dark Souls with, like, forever ago, and he ended up, like, moving, and then he got, like, a PlayStation, and then a PC, and now he's back on Xbox. Mm -hmm. And he was restarting Monster Hunter World, and we were like almost in the exact same spot. Oh, nice. And so we we're just replaying through it together. So it's crazy because I haven't talked to this guy in like five, six years. Would you say that's a big coincidence, a small coincidence, or just a coincidence? I don't know. Probably just a coincidence. <laughs> I feel like a big, small. I feel like they're all the same. Yeah, there you it, go. it could or could not have happened. Um, I went ahead and watched that documentary we recommended to you guys last week, Long Shot. I actually thought it was really cool. Yeah, it was I really it too. Good. good. And uh, again, for 40 minutes, it was like the perfect. It flew by, man. Time, yeah. yeah, it was good. And then I actually started watching another one called This Is Pop. It was actually under the recommended on Netflix. Uh, yep, and I if you're it. really into music, especially like it being a kid, like Backstreet Boys and all that stuff, but Britney Spears and everything, there's really cool music breakdowns. The episode that kind of really got me into it, um, I was lying there and Christina was watching it, is the second one, and it's about auto tune. It's all about auto tune, but T Pain being significantly like the first person to use it. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'm friends with, I think it's like Usher. And he's like, yeah, I was on a plane with Usher. And he told me, he's like, yeah, you fuck music up for real musicians and real singers. Oh. And he's like, dude, it started like a huge depression for me because he was like my boy. And, you know, did I really fuck music up? But then it goes into like five years ago, I think, when he did that Unplugged where everyone realized he really could sing and had a really oh, good yeah, singing voice fucking, and stuff. Yeah, and, and it went into that and he's like, you know, I feel like that brought a lot of credibility back to him as an artist. And he's like, you know, there's all these people talking shit about me using auto-tune, but then it showed the number one playlist for that year and all top 10 of the number one songs on the billboard are all featuring t-pain 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 nice. and then the second episode or the episode after that was how they were sending everyone to like switzerland switzerland i guess is like the number one music place in the world for people to like remix or you go in there with a producer they sent like backstreet boys over there britney spears over there so to like, like the proving grounds and shit and it's just i apparently either way check that out it's like a 10 episode thing and i'm only like three in but it's been really badass all right guys with that down um let's get into the first big piece of news and that is that playstation is making some really big moves right now and some would say maybe a type of retaliation because as you guys know a while back microsoft spent you know a few billion dollars acquiring bethesda and zenimax Huge. and yeah that get, that got them franchises and titles like elder scrolls and fallout starfield doom wolfenstein and dishonored and a lot of people you know were kind of asking and questioning like what can sony do to combat that because microsoft has the money to pay for those type of things and sony really can't so what Sony did is they have a lot of different things in the pipeline. And the first main thing uh, we want to talk about is that they just acquired Housemark. Now, if Housemark sounds familiar to you guys, it's because, you know, it's a Finland company and they've been around for 26 plus years. And what they're really known for is like really smooth, really fluid arcade style games. And some of their big ones would be uh, Super Stardust, which, you know, came back as far as 96. And they did an ultra remake of it. Uh, Rezogun and Next. Machina, but the big one that they have is something they stepped outside of their comfort zone and did and that would be you know the roguelite third person shooter that is the ps5 exclusive Returnal so if right. you look at housemark's resume 
um, they have a very, very close personal relationship with Sony. So yeah, it looks, was exclusive. Yeah, it looks like a good move for them. I got to say, though, they had to have been curious of how Returnal was going to um, kind of be received because it's almost like a Sekiro. Even though this game is clearly Game of the Year material, it is not. For everybody, so right. um, Andrew, you see that they just picked up House Mark. I mean, what was your first initial reaction in this? I think that it definitely fit them, especially given their relationship. Because again, like you were saying, you know, Returnal's exclusive, Rezo Guns exclusive. They have worked with Xbox before. They put out games that have been on both consoles. I think it's called like Outland or something like that. I remember the cover being some Outland, uh, yeah. uh, some weird one or something like that. It's got like some dude holding swords. I never played it, but I know that that was on the 360. You could actually get it now. I think it was even a Games with Gold. So I mean, with how their relationship has gone, I think it was kind of. I don't want to say too surprising, but with kind I don't want to say backlash, but with the way Returnal's been received and kind of the criticism that it's gotten, on top of, they were actually working on another game too before called Storm Divers. That was going to be a third person battle royale style shooter that they ended up putting on the back burn and they just, it, right now it kind of seems like it's almost all out canceled. No one's really said anything about it. And that's something I wanted to ask you is do you think that they maybe have that sort of worry going into that? Does it seem like maybe that was a better decision, Let, especially with how Warzone and everything else is on the landscape? Was it the better decision to cancel something like this and put out Returnal? Yeah, well, I like that because I think, because here's the thing that I think a lot of people do not get is that everyone's trying to get a piece of this pie this battle royal pie and the and all that's left is crumbs at this point all the ones right. that are going to do work are doing work and i mean it takes a special breed of animal to pull an apex and drop out of nowhere and kind of slide in so i think it's smart when a company as you know kind of as old as what house mark is recognizes that said right. project is not the time to do it because you look at their you know some of their lineup and they've got games like you know uh super stardust golf tee up Dead Nation, Outland, uh, Angry Birds Trilogy, Rezo Gun. You know, a Battle Royal doesn't seem like it would fit that style. And I like that they kind of went more towards Sony to get funding for a game like Returnal. You know what I mean? Because if we just would have got another Battle Royal out of out of a, out of a company that has an you know, exclusive that's, Battle Royal, yeah, that's known that, yeah. that's known to be real smooth and real um, real clean in their design, and that's what we got out of House Mark versus something like Returnal that I don't want to say is innovative. But it's definitely something we haven't seen in a while to bring to the table. So I'm glad they left their house mark on this game versus a battle royale. I think that would have been completely the wrong move. And in a lot of cases, that takes so much resources to even get a game like that functioning. That could have buried them. I, de I definitely agree. I mean, I they could have closed. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with that. And I mean, that's obviously got to be a symbol then too. Is Returnal, in a way, it's received well, but it's also kind of not. That's kind of that 50-50. Depends on who it is that you ask. And you had a shelved game too recently, and Sony still wanted to purchase you. That must say something about you know the quality of work you're putting out and your division. Yeah, because one of the other cool things is, I mean, it's they work. They have such a close relationship with Sony that it, you know it's got to be good. It's got to be an easy welcome for them to step into the family because you know Sony's known for for buying studios that work close with them, right? They've got. Um, they've got Insomniac that they were doing with Spider-Man. They've got Naughty Dog. They've got Guerrilla Games. They got Santa Sucker Monica. Punch. So Sucker Punch. So to bring in a game that they've been working with for so long and is and is so equipped to deal with them, um, I I really really like. And the other thing you got to look at is not only are they picking up a game that's going to give them something that that you know there's probably going to be a Returnal two or three that's going to be a franchise on its own. But Housemark isn't known for doing franchises. They're known for every couple of years making a new IP. So they're looking at something that has the potential to be pumping out a new game, a new IP every two, three, four years. So I think that's really a smart bet for them to get something like that. And I think, you know, out of all the studios we could have been looking at, that was definitely um, a, a pick that I think a lot of people, I don't want to say saw coming, but it would have been the top three votes. For sure, because I know Resogun was like the PS4 sweetheart. It was definitely a launch game and a lot of people loved it. Yeah, so that is the big one. That is happening. This all news this news dropped on the 29th. We're sitting here on the first of the month, and that just dropped. But what happened was right after that dropped was um Sony Japan dropped another tweet welcoming welcoming a different studio into the fold. So the next thing we want to talk about is the theoretical purchase you know if it is or isn't happening of blue point so right after they did the uh the, the drop with uh housemark this tweet came out from nebellion and it said uh 
So apparently PlayStation Japan uploaded the wrong image with their first tweet on Housemark's acquisition, and it actually mentions a Blue Point acquisition. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Blue Point, they're one of the best in the business when it comes to making remakes and um, uh, collection series. Collection series. So some of their games uh, include the God of War collection, the Ico and Shadow of the Colossus collection, the Metal Gear Solid collection, uh, a port for a few titles. The Uncharted Nathan Drake Collection, Shadow of the Colossus, and of course, I would say the game that everyone would probably unanimously ag agree looks the best running on next gen was Demon Souls, which right now knocked it out of the park. So, Andrew, if they were to acquire Blue Point, I mean, is this just one more, you know, icing on the cake still? Or are we taking something away from anyone else? Because Blue Point's also worked with doing, you know, Electronic Arts doing Titanfall. You know, do we want Blue Point just under Sony, or, or how do you look at it? I think it would, again, make sense for them because, again, they did do a lot of those other other collections, but then they also completely remade, they remade Shadow of the Colossus. They remade Demon's Souls. That game is a beautiful game. I actually had a question for you, too, in regards to it, is that do you think, and this is something that I wouldn't want to see happen, do you think with this purchase that they are going to be stuck as that remake talent only? Is that a waste of talent? I think so because... I wouldn't want to see something like this being stuck. Okay, well, let's remake... I, I don't fucking know. A Twisted Metal. Let's remake other Sony classics. Let's remake Siphon Filter. And you're just that remake company now. Just go ahead and remake these classic games that we know people are going to want to play. I kind of look at it as that is what they're going to do. I think Sony's recognizing that a lot of people are complaining that they don't do backwards compatibility. And I think Sony's kind of seen the writing on the wall that we're moving into this era where remakes, remakes, remakes... Uh, re and reboots are are really starting to hit a stride and if you know everyone always wants to go oh let me be able to put a playstation one disc in there but like no one's really going to be playing that whole back catalog if blue point can take some of the classics that playstation has because playstation compared to microsoft microsoft doesn't really have this back catalog of decades of games that anyone really needs either updated or remade where sony right, they have going like back a handful, yeah. four generations of you know ps1 two three four games and I could see Blue Point being them going, instead of focusing on backwards compatible, let's take a handful of our greatest games and do it. Now, do I want them to be, you know, kind of pigeonholed into this thing where that's their job? No, but it would be cool if they kind of did, you know, a remake here and then two years later, a new game or, a and then a remake and then a new game because we're not even close to hitting the peak. And when you look at things like reboots of like God of War and Tomb Raider that have just dropped that people are completely infatuated with and these games are awesome and then you look at the remakes that are coming out that are resident evil 2 and 3 and spyro and crash and tony hawk and final fantasy 7 and especially with mass effect if sony is sitting there going damn these games are selling out every time they do and they're up for game of the year how many games can we go back and pump out that people actually want you know you said like twisted metal and stuff but i'm looking at like legacy of kane and like legend of dragoon and things like that so would I want Blue Point to be stuck in that position? I wonder position? if they have no. the rights to even do something like Legend of Dragoon. I think that would actually that's a game that would definitely deserve something like that. Exactly, something like that. And if they have a team dedicated to start pumping out these cult classic games, then I think I think it would get people a lot of off of their back of going, oh, well, where's the backwards compatibility? It's like we don't need that when we know all you guys really want to play are these fifteen games. And once these fifteen games are here. We're never, we don't have to hear about it again. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's a good way to kind of shut that up. And what better company to acquire than Blue Point if, if and when they do? I think that would be okay provided they're given the choice of what they want to do. Do you want to remake a game or would you like to take a stab at a new IP, see how that goes? If that doesn't turn out so well, then you're back on remake duty until what you know, to whatever time given. As long as they're given at least the choice to do something, you know what I mean? Yeah, because that team definitely has um, you know, creativity and it'd be really Demon fascinating. Demon's Souls is a beautiful game. Yeah, exactly. But see, you never get that though if that team was doing new IP cuz who's to say cuz it's it's easy to say you know, in retrospect of like, oh, they're good at that and that's why Demon Souls is good versus like, oh, they made a new IP. From they, the ground They haven't up, done that. Yeah. Can they do that? And I'm sure Sony doesn't want to put all of its eggs in a new basket going, we'll do something new and we'll, we'll see if it works. Where they're going, hey, we know you guys can do this. Here's five games we need out by 2031. That's a very good point. And I wonder if that even is something because, yeah, coming with Shadow of the Colossus, coming with... Demon Souls, you have a foundation to work with to improve upon. Coming up with something, square one, how it works, plays, feels, breathes. Can you make that play good, just as good as it looks to? Yeah, so, I mean, interesting, interesting stuff. So, 
Oh, what was he? That was a sprayer. Uh, let's move into the third piece of news with this is because Sony's having a big week. And the final one is that uh, Sony just purchased uh, Nixus. Uh, and what Nixus is, if you guys haven't heard of them, is they're pretty much a just console to PC port studio. I, I believe in the entire history of their career, they've never made any original IP. What they did is they were a big helper with... Um, with um, uh, Square Enix, or before it was actually all under Square Enix, like Crystal Dynamics and things like that. They're porting a lot of their games because they're responsible for doing ports of uh, like Legacy of Kane back in the day, a lot of the Tomb Raiders, Hitman, Deus Ex, uh, yeah, and of course Shadow of the Tomb Raider recently. So this has to look at another kind of way of how Sony's kind of moving forward in the industry is now... If they're acquiring this studio that's specifically known for just moving games from console to PC, then we'd have to assume that's what they're looking forward to doing. Because one of the things that Sony was kind of the last one to limp across the finish line was, was moving games from console to PC. Because when you look at Xbox and Microsoft, they're specific. Any game that says, hey, come into Xbox, you just hand in hand go, oh, it's going to PC. Sony was really, you know, kind of weary on doing that. But as soon as they saw how much money is on the table from taking a game like Horizon that came out in 2017 and launching it on PC and then making a shitload of money on it, they're going, oh, well, why don't we take some of these great classics? Because they just, they did Horizon Zero Dawn all within the last year and they did Days Gone. Yeah. And I know the rumor is that they're supposed to be moving Ghost of Tsushima and God of War to PC next. So... I think it's, you know, about time they kind of jump in it. And again, another company that's dedicated to one thing. These are very strategic moves that they're making and companies that they're purchasing to move forward with their kind of their overall idea. What do you think? I know a lot of people are complaining about the idea that it's coming to PC. But I think with some of these games, I guess you can consider not a legacy game, but something like Uncharted 4, The Last of Us, something that's not selling gangbusters anymore on console. Right, it's five years done. <laughs> yeah, why not purchase that on a PC and just, you know, kind of keep milking that cow and see what you can get out of it. And who knows, maybe even something like that would prove a better market because we know that Days Gone didn't do exactly that well and it didn't set the world on fire. They've already said that they're not working on a sequel. The sequel is not greenlit yeah. because of the deception of the first game. That if this was something that, I again, it didn't set the PC world on fire either. But if this was something that came out and just lit that fire, then maybe, okay, that's the little push we needed to get a sequel greenlit for our game that maybe did or did not get a fair shake when it originally came out. Yeah, that's a really good point too because, yeah, th that fan base grows. I mean, it'd be... It'd be interesting and i'm sure in due time it'll happen if sony ever announces a game day and date on console that would be PC. The, that would be the that, big killer, yeah, yeah. that'd be nuts but as far as them moving forward in pc i think it's just bound to happen and so overall we got to look at it and you know sony did three big things today or within the last week and potentially with blue point is they bought something that's going to be a franchise and has potential to make new exciting ip in one door the second one is they have a thing that can now remake in, in a time right now where everyone's craving good remakes. Since remakes in games isn't like remakes in movies. You know what I mean? It's not like watching a reboot of a movie. When people when you remake in these games, a lot of these game generations go by and no one plays Spyro. So when you get to play right. Spyro reboot, you know, the remake and it's all three games, that's exciting stuff because I know you went back and did that. So now they have a company that can redo all of their old classics. And then as far as taking care of the PC side of it, they have a company that's dedicated to it. So when you compare those three buys compared to the overall purchase that Microsoft did with Bethesda, I've got to say, even though it's not on par value-wise maybe, I, I would say moving forward strength-wise, you can't say they're not equipped now to handle more versatility. I would say, and, and maybe it's because we already know what's coming from Bethesda, we know what's like coming out those doors that theirs is a little bit more exciting because we don't know where that's going to go. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah, Who knows what they're going to do with it because th it would be disappointing if they bought it and, and no fruit of that came. And it was like, oh, we bought this port thing and here's one game in, in three years that we've ported to PC. It's like, well, then what was the acquisition for? So, I mean, I said, I definitely don't think that they would ever do day and date though. You don't think? You don't even think down the line that once they see how much more they make because again, they got to kind of keep their I wonder if they even really full. make that much more, you know? Wow, it's a whole audience that's playing now Horizon. That they, but again, it's it's almost like I don't want to say a free revenue of, of cash, but you know what I mean? Because I, I don't know how much it takes to port it. But I mean, that's just a whole big base now. People that would that's that's a five year later well that they can now dry. Yeah, but do they really make that much on it? Because by then, Horizon, Uncharted, The Last of Us, these are all games that are like Game of the Year nominees, God of War that. 
are must plays at the time that they come out. Nobody's waiting five years to play those games but just they to get are. on PC. I, I, uh, they I'm are sure, that's what they. There's got to be. I'm they're, sure some people do, but I mm-hmm. I don't think the numbers are as big as people really think that I they think are. I think it's got to be big enough for them to look at it, not look at buying a porting system. I mean, wouldn't it be maybe ten copies tops? <laughs> ten copies tops. So. I don't know. It's, I think it's really interesting stuff, and I think it's a good move for sure. Sony's definitely looking at playing a long game because their long game is now. Let's develop new franchises, let's do new remakes, and let's look at doing ports. These are all things that they haven't been doing a lot of recently. And here we go. They just made that. They just they just kind of quieted everybody within a week's notice of, of all this thing. Did you think? Do you think Blue Point? Let me ask you this. Do you think Blue Point is actually going to happen, or do you think that for sure they don't make that by out? accident? Right. You think they just had that in the chamber and it was just kind of let's keep I, talking about us? It'd be one thing if they're like, oh, I mistyped the name, but no, you have the fucking font, you have the company's name typed out on there. You have to have a graphic person go in there and actually make it. It's not like they're just like, oh, we copy and pasted the wrong fucking name on there. Like someone actually took the time of their day and got paid to make that so that's ready in the chamber to go well because i wouldn't be so much um, i wonder if that'll be a next sony event announcement yeah, i wouldn't be so much convinced that the the graphic was made it's that there so many japan tweeted it you know what i mean it's not so much that it was made it's that an official company actually tweeted it and then on top it, of that so. yeah but i i'm really happy for housemark though because one of the things in the business that you got to remember when you're these companies is that you've got to look for finance at the same time without compromising you know creativity because you still want to make your game and one of the cool things if you look at the you know the history of what happened with Returnal is that Sony gave them pretty much free ride to be like hey you know we're gonna back you guys up do your game and I wonder if it was almost riding on how well this game when it came out it was kind of like okay now let's sign them because it's almost like Tim Schafer with Psychonauts when when they joined um, uh, was it Double Fine when they came into Microsoft it's like we not we don't necessarily want to be on one platform, but the fact now that we get to free range to do whatever story we want, and we'll never have to look for funding again. I mean, that has to be a load off. That is kind of the icing at the end of the road for for these companies because Housemark's never gonna have to look for funding again. They're always gonna have Sony backing. So I'd say that goes in any business. If someone wanted to support us and pick us up, I'm sure in a heartbeat we <laughs> yeah, go grab us now. So um, I think that's about as far as I want to go with all three of this. Unless there's anything else you want to add on this story i change it i think maybe like 12 copies is what they'll sell <laughs> so guys leave us down uh leave us comments down below if you guys think it's a good move or if you think that sony is moving into more remakes or pc ports because i gotta say the 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 information i would say points to that but, but who knows what they're gonna do with that company maybe they want blue point just to make a particular ip so uh that is the end of our main news today so let's move into a little riffing it up so Andrew, what are you riffing about, my man? Uh, my riff is they actually just dropped a trailer today for Mortal Kombat Legends Battle of the Realms. Now that is a sequel to the other Mortal Kombat animated movie. If you have not watched it, definitely go check it out because it's crazy good. I recommend it to Craig. He ended up loving it too. It's a really good movie and a really good retelling with some differences. The first one's called Scorpion's Revenge, so it's more centered around him, but a retelling of the first story. And it looks like they're sticking to the new canon of the Mortal Kombat games with this sequel. Because again, you see Shao Kahn come in, he's trying to take over, which is same old, same old. You're seeing return characters like Striker, who wasn't really in 2, he doesn't come in until 3. But you're also seeing new characters that we didn't see in OG Mortal Kombat until they did 10 and 11, like Devorah is actually in this trailer. And so that's going to drop on august 31st of this year the first one is great this one looks absolutely great too so i cannot wait to watch it because anything mortal kombat i'm loving yeah the fact that shao khan's in there ready to fuck shit up i just just like when he's like lord raiden shao khan dude and then you get a little more of that background into like how Liu kang is supposed to be you know as special as he is and then they i mean Again, like you said, they kind of glossed over the original one in terms of like being around Scorpion versus now being on Mortal Kombat. But at the end, when that Sub Zero's like, "You're gonna get, I'm gonna repay you for killing my brother," I was just like, "Damn!" So if you guys have seen the original one, it is, in my opinion, one of the best video game movie adaptations I've ever seen. For sure, and it's been extremely uh, bloody and gory. So I'd only imagine this one was just as bloody as gory because um, I can only imagine when Liu Kang fights Shang Tsung. How that's gonna end up shaking out? I hope he goes young Shang Tsung though, because when he's fighting him on old, I was like, ah, because in the second one he gets his youth like return. Right. So I'm like, okay, cool, because there's no way this old ass man is going hand to hand. Maybe with- he's like uh, uh, Dooku. He just fucking sits up and he starts moving. Or like the old guy from uh, Kill Bill Two. 
<laughs> yeah, so uh, my riff, guys, is that if you want my if you want ever want to stick it to the man, this guy did it uh, pretty good. So Microsoft Crazy engineer stole ten million dollars by selling Xbox gift cards for Bitcoin. So this guy uh, named Vladimir Vashuk was sentenced to nine years in prison and will be charged restitution of eight point three million dollars now what this guy essentially did was he was in charge of testing microsoft payment system so if they were testing it and you they were seeing you buying anything on the storefront whether that be a game or merchandise uh right it the 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 uh, proxy accounts wouldn't process it but he found out that if you buy 5 10 15 20 dollar gift cards they actually give you a legit 25 digit code so this was back in 2017 and he didn't tell anybody about it and what he would do is he would accumulate these codes. He would make he made a um, like he made a piece of uh, heart, uh, software that pretty much covered his tracks and put it into his other employee account so that it looked like it was spread out. And then he would go to uh, money laundering accounts and kind of process the money. And what happened was. Uh, yeah, he would go to sites like Chip Mixer and sell them in bulk. Yeah. yeah. So then what he would do is he would sell these things in huge quantities <laughs> and make a shitload of money. So the way he got caught was from what they're saying is they started looking at what this guy was starting to spend on. He was buying seaplanes, a yacht, and multiple lavish houses in Maui, California, and Mercer Island, among other location a so idiot. yeah when it came to uh in 2019 so two years of this guy doing this uh microsoft was noticing these you know from what steady to being these sharp spikes of gift card transactions and so it just shows that this guy was going pretty much ham with it and uh in 2019 he finally got caught and his house was raided and the end of the story is this guy was uh deported and sent back to i believe it was ukraine yeah nine years in prison and almost you know 10 million dollars in restitution fees and i gotta say dude that's a ballsy move from this guy like i mean because you can look at it obviously it's clearly wrong but if you are going to do something wrong do it right you know what i mean why would you go be buying all this random shit because it's all you're gonna get caught it's like wolf of wall street you're gonna get caught eventually when you overplay your hand I'd rather probably just die because I mean, what am I? There's no way I'm paying back 8.2 million. It's like if you went to the hospital and they set you up with a big bill, like, all right, you should just let me die. <laughs> so I mean, I don't know, but do you think this guy could have gotten away of if he just would have kept it under the key? radar yeah. for sure, or at least for how much longer? Longer than a two year run. I don't know. Guy man. buys a yacht on a, on a Microsoft uh, salary that everyone knows what he's making. He can't. He can't be the top guy in the total. Yeah, I, yeah. I Phil no Spencer's looking at it going, "Why does this guy own nicer houses than me?" Well, yeah. Why is his boat bigger than mine? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't know. I thought that was a crazy piece of info because this news just dropped today. So this guy uh, sentencing just happened and all yeah, that. Yeah. When and, I read that, that was hilarious. So. Yeah. So that is wild. So uh, that is the end of riffs, guys. So let's move into questions of the week. So. The first question comes from Talha Kasim, and he writes, uh, "If you were to choose from Iron Man and Batman, who'd come on top? Wait, if you were to choose from Iron Man and Batman, who'd come on top? I love Iron Man, but I've always been a diehard Batman fan since I was like eight. So Batman for me. Um, some of these questions, when we get them, are a little bit longer, so I paraphrase. So the battle between Batman and Iron Man, who do you think's taking it?" I think if it's like first encounter, it'd have to be like Iron Man. But if he's got prep time, then I think Batman could take him. Well, see, and because that, that's always kind of the answer. If Batman has enough prep time, he'll be able to win. That's kind of the default Batman answer. But like, what the fuck is prep time? Like six years, twenty minutes, five, you know, five, uh, seconds, you know, what's give prep him time? Twenty four hours. Twenty four hours. So even if we were to look at Batman gaining the Terry McGinnis Batman Beyond suit, right? Let's even give him that and twenty four hours. Stat wise. He would take him. The strength doesn't add up. Iron Man is way he, stronger. He'd have some weird the fucking gear. virus that would make the suit shut down. Batman can get beat by Killer Croc or Bane on a random day. Iron Man, I mean, you couldn't even, even in the Bat suit, watch Batman Beyond. Terry can get clocked by, what's the Joker, the, the big dude in the Joker gang? That, that's, oh, I don't know I his mean, name. As I was saying, he's just a regular guy, though. He can hit Terry and he can go flying. No one's punching Iron Man's suit. So I'm just I, what I'm trying to figure out is what damage would he even be able to do? Because at that point we'd go tech on tech, and I don't know if yeah maybe he's Batman's got some like weird beating out Jarvis. Maybe he's got some like weird EMP tool or something. 
You don't think his suit is is can know can know that shit out? Like he's not prepared. I know for in the it. first movie it couldn't when he got frozen and then it took like yeah, twenty minutes before it started back up. I don't up. know. I I and, and again it would also, if it Captain also America could beat him with a fucking good old American <laughs> shield, then Batman could find him. Right, I've changed my answer. I, again, it would depend on who's writing it, but I would say if if it's just a first encounter. And Batman's even able to call the, the the suit for Batman Beyond. I still think Iron Man would probably Iron have Man for sure on a first encounter. Hand, so um, I don't know. I guess we'll say I'm saying Iron Man. You're saying Iron Man on a first encounter. But if he has prep time, if he has prep time, Batman. <laughs> then we'll give him Batman. Uh, next question comes from Blue Steel, and from the last episode, he says, "Latigra nice. Ferrari." He says, uh, "Nice episode. I like your format. How much money do you spend on video games? Is it more or less than you spend on other forms of entertainment?" Um, more. I don't know. I, I would say I would say probably less recently because once me and Andrew started like splitting games, you got to remember. You, I mean, we only pay for X amount of titles a year, big games. There's probably only six, seven, eight games that are that we buy, and then and then now divide that in half. So what's that? A couple hundred bucks. I, where probably, I would say if we were to do our comic book, I would say I spend more on comic, comic books, books lately is, than I do. Every time we go to a thing is at least a few hundred bucks versus us spending a few hundred bucks. The year plus, my, you know, my Game Pass subscription overall for gaming. Do you look at it a different way? No, I was just about to say the same thing. I mean, even today we were debating on whether or not we should get a hotel or just crash at family and drive back. We decided to stay with family so we could use the extra little bit of money just on comic books. Little Moss Yeah, for Yeah, sure, I, take that one. Oh, you didn't even get to your, your second day? No, I kind of didn't. I feel like the conversation just kind of really flew by and I was like super into it that I just didn't end up drinking. Nothing wrong with that. Because, um, yeah, because I would say, because Andrew and I split games. So even if you're looking at game costs, you know, a few hundred bucks plus that a year. I mean, we're about to go to Torpedo Con. I can't even imagine how much we're about to spend there. Because you got to remember, at least if, you don't, if you don't have the book, you got to buy the book. Then you got to then you got to get the signature if you haven't done that, which we bought certain passes for. Then you got to grade the books and ship them. You know what I mean? So every little day in in a comic book signing or grading is, Adds a, up quick. is about the year you pay in gaming for sure. I mean, obviously, I just bought a PS5, which was a lot, but. That's going to be one purchase over X amount of years where this signing is going to be one signing out of out of many <laughs> in the next couple of years. So I don't know. I would say a few hundred bucks on g- games a year and comic books would be our more import- our more expensive hobby. Yeah, it's yeah definitely by far more expensive than right. anything else. And our last question, because we have a couple more, but I'm going to save those for next week. Our last question comes from Melissa Segura, and she writes, uh, Good show as always, guys. Seems like PS5 is the diva click of the school. If you had to rate each gaming system from most bougie to least, how would you rank them? Andrew? And I assume when, when we're saying rank them, we're talking this gen, right? We're not saying of all time. We're saying, right? Is that how you would take it? Because I would, we can't sit here and rattle off 25 systems. I'll just go right. I'd say Xbox is the baddest bitch. <laughs> and then uh, PlayStation and then Switch. Well, because um, I, cause I was looking at bougie. I've always thought bougie just meant badass motherfucking, you know, just get it down. But the actual definition is a hip-hop slang for something is luxurious in lifestyle, yet humble in character. So when you look at something like, um, I, I would say Switch would probably be the most bougiest. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's something that's getting the most action, most attention, uh, you know, 50 games a day when it comes to indie, port after port, but still just this humble guy that sits in the back as you're, you're on the go, your dock system, your guy. So I don't know. I'm, I'm putting Switch pretty Actually, high up there. I'd put PlayStation last. I'd put Switch second because Xbox. Oh, PlayStation's is, got a real attitude on her. Xbox is definitely humble. <laughs> Look at that sleek square design. They don't need the big fucking weird white clamshell thing, whatever the fuck's going on. Well, with I that saw in the massive comments, system. I saw in the comments that Gino put um, PC as number one. Would you would you rank PC as um, in that category? No. No. Why not? I don't play it. I don't care. Well, not that you don't play it, but would you would you put it in in terms of gaming system, or 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 would you limit that question to just console? I just don't ever like to look at it that way, even though I know it is because I work on computers all day. So that's the only way <laughs> I you. Could, it's to you. It's the enemy. <laughs> yeah. So that's the only thing I could ever really see it as. Just like I'm sure, like some artists, when you're looking at art, you can really only kind of see it as work if you've been working on so much versus like. Oh, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, because there's a podcast I listen to, and the, and the one guy's like, I edit and do all the, and video clipping, all this stuff all day on a PC. When I want to play games, I don't just, I don't turn on my PC 
I get on my couch, you know, I play, I pick up my console, I play my controller. That's kind of their distance from certain things. That, so in your case, I can completely yeah, see Yeah, that's where, how it is for me, man. I spend all day on a PC that I can't even look at it as a gaming console. Uh, yeah, I would say the bougies to me would be the Switch. I mean, she's a, she's a sharp girl. She's getting a lot of love, a lot of attention. But at the end of the day, you know, humble. It's something that's sitting back, you know, half a decade, you know, half, not half a decade, half a generation in terms of power. But still, I mean, getting the most love. It's, I mean... Everyone I know that plays most games has a Switch next to their, their main system. I'd say they're humble, all right? They definitely made it underpowered. <laughs> uh, so we have two more questions from Divine Anchor and my brother Gino, but we're actually going to put those on next week's episodes because we are pushing it a little far today. So um, overall, man, I, I think it was a good, strong uh, move for Sony. And, I mean, it's, I'm really curious of where they're going to go in the future with all this. Yeah, I think that's kind of more the thing is it's exciting to see really what they're going to do. Because, again, I mean, you might bitch and moan about remakes. Mm-hmm. But when they make a remake of your favorite fucking game of all time or something that you had love for as a kid, you know, you're singing a different tune. Yeah. So, guys, leave us down below your uh, thoughts on the news that we covered, um, any news maybe we missed, and answers to all of the questions. So, guys, until next time. My name is Craig Prowls, and that is Manju Montemere. Cheers. Cheers. Describe a bagel bite to me from that commercial. Um, what do you mean, like the song? No, like the food. I would say a cheesy top with a hard, uh, toasty bottom. So I didn't know that that's actually what they look like. Well, I remember I watching. I don't know what that means. I remember watching that trailer all the time, and um, trailer that commercial all the time. <laughs> but my mom always used to buy these ones, and maybe they're what are those? They're called bagel bites, right? They're all called bagel bites. Yeah, when pizza on a bagel, you can eat. Yeah, bagel bites. Well, I'm sure there's knockoff like. No, she bought bagel bites, <sighs> but they used to come. They used to call them stuffed. I guess is what they're called, and so. It's like a bagel bite with like a top. So it's like a small little calzone and it had like a little hole and the cheese would like pop out of there. Oh, that's a different thing, man. No, it's the same fucking thing. I, I, me and my brother know all about them. I forgot what I was talking I think you're talking about the the pizza bagel croissant? No. I Google it. I'm good at it. I I had to Google it and find a fucking picture of it and I couldn't remember what the fuck they were called and I thought I was wrong because I went to the store but I was like, you know what? I haven't had these in a long time and I thought that was the normal thing and then when I saw the bagel bites, I was like, what the fuck is that? All right, so there's our pizza bagel. Bagel, okay, so bagel bites and what the fuck? I don't know what, (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about. Type in bagel bites and then stuffed. Fuck. Okay, let's see. Mm-mm. Bagel bites, bagel. B- so there's okay, yeah. So that had okay. So you just had a version of bagel bites that just had like yeah that. Whoa, they look like a. Uh, I don't want to say they look like like soft cookies and they do like a bagel bite. Dude, but you line up like ten of those bad boys. You see that ten? You see that like it's only fourteen to a sitting. You see that little hole on the top? Oh yeah. Like yep, the yep. cheese like pops it's out like of there. That's how, that's how you know when it's like cooked, but. I never knew Bagel Bites came in another way. I thought these were Bagel Bites all the time because that's all my mom ever fucking bought. I didn't know they came in like the half shell thing. (laughs) And so when I...